everybody and welcome back to another episode of The Last Game Hunter. And guys, today we're going to find out should you water cool your computer? So right now guys, we're running the stock cooler. You can hear it's loud. It really is loud actually. Uh, a lot louder than what I'm used to from an AMD cooler. It is a bigger cooler than I've tried before. It's a Gen 1, so that might be a factor. And we're running at 37 degrees. So this is just idle. So now we're gonna bench test and see what happens with the performance and the cooling. Okay, so the highest the CPU actually hit was 48 degrees, and now it's dropped back down to 36 pretty quickly. So this cooling fan is actually doing pretty good for a factory cooler, I gotta say. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to install the radiator and the liquid cool system and see how much this changes or if it actually changes. Okay guys, one thing that's really nice about this, this is the original plate for the AMD socket and basically these things, while it's in the board of course, are just going to screw down inside like so. Then your liquid cool is going to go on here and then there's a thumb screw that goes on that that tightens it down. So you don't even need to use any other included back panes with the AM4 socket. If you're using AMD's uh, AM2 or AM3 or uh, FM1 or anything like that, you would use the bracket that's supplied with the kit or Intel, you would use the bracket supplied. But for the AM4, factory back pane is all you need. That made this so much easier for sure. Okay, so we've now built ourselves a jet engine. This thing is moving tons of air. Let's see uh, what happens now when we fire up the software. Okay, so now we've got everything installed. It's moving tons of air. I mean, because it's up top, we're hearing it pretty good because the machine's really close to us. And it is throwing air. This thing is massive. Very, very easy install, I have to say. All your wires just daisy chain together for your RGB and you have your own controller if you don't have it on your board. So from here, we're running at 30, 31 or 32 degrees right now on idle. Now we're gonna bench test and see what happens. So we're just gonna run CPU test. Wow, we're down to 27 degrees. As this is sitting itself in, the heating compound and everything is blending. Uh, we're gonna notice temperature drops. So that's one big bonus of this. Uh, Basically in the very beginning will be what I call a fictitious reading based on it just being all new Arctic Silver and working together. We're running at 35 degrees right now and dropping on a bench test. So before we hit the high of 48, let's see what we hit a high of. We're almost done. 90% or 98% of the time actually, we stayed within the 30 degree area uh, right now we're running 33 degrees near the end of this test. We hit a high so far of, and a high literally of 42. So we hit a high of 48 on the uh, air. We just hit a high, a little high. I'm gonna say, when I say we hit a high, we hit a high of 42 for a split second and it dropped down to 38. We're running at 28 degrees now after the bench test. We were running much higher idle after the bench test before. So just for fun, I'm gonna run the test once again. Now I think that things are sit in better. This will be the better test. At this point too, we're a little warmer. Give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna push it a little harder. So we hit 42 for a second and it dropped down to 35. That is really impressive. We're holding a 34, 38 on a CPU bench test. So we're stressing the CPU. So it's hit 42 again one more time. This is just after running a bench test, but we did hit a high of 44. But to be fair, this is a second run of a bench test that I believe that if we did it on air, we probably would have hit 51, 52. 34 degrees and holding 33. We just dropped to 33 degrees, just like that. Just like that. And now we're down below, we're in the 29, 27 degree area. So guys, let me give you my thoughts of the overall build and everything. So let's just get back to it. Okay 
guys, so what was the question? The question was, is it worth it to liquid cool your computer? Now, for the price point of this cooler, this is only $110 Canadian. It's a radiator with three 120s on it, so this is a 360, and it's the Game Max L360 V2. I'm using its own controller, which allows me to change colors, flicker, do what I want with the lighting, which is kind of cool. It also comes with an adapter to plug it straight into the motherboard. But in this case, I figured I'd leave that open as he's running a blue scheme due to the fact that my friend has LED blue lights in the front and rear, so he can't change the color. So in this case, I will make sure he can't change the color. <laughs> but anyway, guys, overall, the cons of this, I have to say, is the noise. I find it a bit noisy. How would that be in a different case? I don't know. We'd have to try that out. And will I? More than likely. I really enjoyed this cooler. Um, overall, the unit was running about 10 degrees cooler is what I'm estimating. So let's say 10 degrees cooler. That could mean a lot if you were to overclock, for example. I found that once you got out of any benching that would push or stress the CPU, the CPU was dropping down to like 24 to 27 degrees. And that's only going to get a little better as the system marries itself from the CPU to the uh, cooler. It just takes a little bit of time for all that to just kind of, you know, work, to work its magic, shall we say. As we've seen on the second time around that I benched it right after benching it just for fun because I knew it was already warm. Why not heat it up some more? And the max we hit was 44 degrees. On a single bench on air, the max we hit was 48. On a single bench on this, the max we hit was 42 on, on liquid. So right off the bat, I could say there's safely a good 8 to 10 degrees definite drop in temperatures as I think that can only get better during gaming. Yeah, there's just a couple things I wanted to address that I didn't put in the video, so I'm adding it now about this Game Max L360 cooler, this all-in-one liquid cooling system. There's one more con that I missed, and that con is when you have the AMD Wraith cooler, you're pushing air down onto your board, which is actually in turn cooling all of your components. So unless you have good cooling, which this case that we did do it all in, did, as you can see, it had fans everywhere. It was pulling in air and sucking air out, so he wouldn't really suffer from it. But if you don't have good, efficient cooling coming in and going across your motherboard, you, your regular components and your board are going to heat up a little more. So there's a problem with water cooling versus air right there. So I just wanted to make that clear. That is one thing. If you're going to water cool, make sure you have good air going across your board. So that is something important. Now that also plays a factor too. If you use a taller fan system, you're not pushing air down on your board either. So keep that in mind when you're doing your fan. So sometimes having a fan that blows down is actually a much more efficient system if it's a good fan, if you're going to stay air cooling, than it is to have a tower fan when it comes to cooling your components, if you don't have good airflow. So here's something that I noticed that is very important. There's a big pro right here because something I missed even though it was right in front of my eyes. And that is the air cooling bench test on the CPU. We were testing it and making the CPU get warm, but I didn't look at the performance. And the first score was 12019. So that was his score on air cooling. Then when we went to the AIO and did the same stress test, we actually got a score of 12088. So we went up some points on there. So it just goes to show that if you're running your system cooler, you're definitely getting a better performance even on a bench test. Now, another thing, I got feedback from the customer and the customer told me that he's running about 38 degrees while gaming. That is a major thing here because we were running in the 60s when he was gaming before. So we've definitely taken care of the problem that this guy was having. So this is a friend of mine. He contacted me and he said he was having trouble and I recommended this AIO. And thank God this AIO turned out to be very good because I recommended it. So that was one of the big things that we were worried about. What is his performance during gaming? And it definitely dropped almost, we won't say half, but almost half on the temperature rating. So a good 20 degrees. And that is very impressive. So I just wanted to add this to the video and let that get out there because it is very important to know that your performance increased 
how is your gaming performance, and so on. And these were little things that I just wanted to put in the video after I noticed I didn't add it to begin with. Which is very much what this gentleman needed this for, was to cool himself off. He was hitting the 60s and 70s while gaming, and this is what our intentions were, were to bring that down at least 10, 15 degrees, and I think this thing can do it. It's definitely got a big enough radiator, and the pump seems to be pretty decent. So this is the Game Max L360 V2. Super simple to install. In fact, like I said, it uses the factory mounting backplate from AMD, so you don't need to use the included mounting plates. Four threaded screws with little threads on it. Screw into that bracket, put your compound on, mount your uh, water block and thumb screw, some screws down on top of those screws, installed. The radiator went in pretty smoothly. This case was a little tight, but still pretty smoothly. So all I have left to do now is clean this bad boy up, make the wiring look a heck of a lot better. Until next time, guys, keep cool. This is The Last Game Hunter saying, game over.